Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a video that a lot of you have been waiting on because I've been putting it off for a pretty long time. This is gonna be the review of the Gun Primer Glazer. And I have a bunch of random things in front of me on my mat here that seem random, but they're actually just the test subjects for this Gun Primer Glazer. Now, if you're considering getting this glazer or you've seen it somewhere else and you're wondering how it works, I want you to pay close attention to this video as I've done some tests to be as unbiased as I could and try to give you some good before and after results. So without further ado, let's check it out. So the unboxing experience is actually pretty decent. You do get some nice packaging as Gun Primer always has. Obviously I've already unboxed this. So inside we would get the glazer right here. The glazer does have this cap that goes on the front of the nozzle to keep it from spraying when you don't want it to. Underneath the foam here, we get two things. Well, three technically. One of them is an included microfiber towel that's actually pretty good. Only thing is it's not an edgeless towel, but if you don't know what that is, you probably wouldn't care. Another very nice nice addition they add is a dust brush pocket. And that's this thing right here. It's just a little dust brush that you can slide out, pick up a figure or a model and brush any dust off of it. Simple as that. I don't know how much this sells on its own, but if it's less than $5, I'd say it might be worth it because I do kind of like it. The bristles are very stiff, so when you're brushing against models, it kind of flicks the dust off more as opposed to just wiping it around. Now, I usually use this brush. It's a makeup brush I got off of Amazon, but the bristles are noticeably not as stiff, and I think this is probably around five or six bucks. I'll put a link to both of these down in the description in case you want to pick one of them up. And the last thing we get in the box is the test card. So this one I actually haven't used yet. I wanted to use it on camera. That way you guys can see a live demonstration of how the glazer is used. So first off, what we're gonna do is brush off any of the dust with the microfiber towel. You can use a brush either way, just get the dust off of it. Then while we're holding one flap down, we're going to spray on the glazer. You don't need too much, just one or two squirts, and then wipe it until it's dry with the microfiber towel. There we go. All right, so let's see how this tested. If we reveal the bottom half, it should be noticeably different. So yeah, you can pick it up on camera pretty well. In person, you kind of have to get the angle of the light in the right spot in order to see the difference, but you can see the difference there. And the back of this is just an adhesive that goes back here and we'll put that away. So yeah, that's pretty much how you use the Gun Primer Glazer. At least that's how I would use it. They don't include instructions in the box, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of self-explanatory. Now, the reason they include the dust brush pocket is in case you want to use the glazer on something that has a lot of sharp edges or intricate areas that a microfiber towel might not be able to get into. So for example, let's just take this lens cap I have on the side of me. Like a microfiber towel would have difficulty getting into these areas right here. So what I can do is just spray a little bit, take out the dust brush, and then just wipe it around. The brush should get in all of the little crevices, even around these embossed letters right here. A lot of the areas that a microfiber towel wouldn't get into, and it should dry the same in about 10 to 15 seconds, I would say. Okay, and here is a slight comparison. You can't really see the difference, but it's on this side. So this brush is gonna come in handy a lot in the future, I would think, even if it's just for dusting model kits off. So let's just go over a little bit behind the glazer and what it can be used on. So on Gun Primer's website, the glazer is listed as a product that can make matte surfaces look even more elegant, give extra glaze on a glossy surface, extend further perfecting your project surface, elegant feel, smooth touch, extra layer of surface protection. And they also say that it works on several types of material, including polystyrene, PVC, silicon, vinyl, glass, ABS, polystone, rubber, acrylic, and metals. In terms of how much you get in the bottle, Gun Primer is a little ambiguous on it. Their website says that you can use it between 20 and 100 models. That doesn't really specify what size of the model, but I would assume 20 maybe master grade or even perfect grade kits up to 100 high grade kits, which seems like a lot. And I would hope so because this was $36. So another thing that Gun Primer is focusing on with this product is they say that it increases the contrast of the different colors of the figure or model kit you're spraying it on. It's also supposed to be fingerprint resistant and prevent dust from settling on your model kit, prevent water stains, static, and minor scratches. 
So that's all that Gun Primer claims the Glazer to be able to do. The big question is, does it actually do it? And thankfully, I purchased this with my own money because that means this review is not sponsored by Gun Primer and I can say whatever I want about this product. And I'll go ahead and be honest, I did not really like it. The application is very easy. The cleanup is very easy. Overall, it's a very easy to use product. Now, if you factor in multiple kits, it's probably gonna take a long time for you to get through all of them. But if you're really adamant on keeping your collection looking good and clean, then maybe it's worth it to you. But before we say anything else, let's go ahead and take a look at some test results. So the first test I did it on was vinyl. Here I have this Winston Funko Pop. Winston's from Overwatch, by the way. And this is cast in a blue vinyl with some white vinyl as well, I'm thinking, and some details painted over it. Now, what I did for all of these tests is I masked off half of the area, then I sprayed the glazer on, wiped it on just that one half, and then took off the masking tape to compare the two sides. With the vinyl, you actually won't be able to see that much of a difference. The main time that you do see a difference is when you angle it a specific way, kind of where the light is bouncing off at a different angle, and you catch that separation between the coated part and the uncoated part. So I wasn't really satisfied with how it worked on the vinyl. Even as I'm recording this review a couple days later after testing, I can't really see the test line. Okay, so we'll move on to test number two. On Gun Primer's website, they have a nice picture of a clear red Sazabi. The closest thing I have to it is this clear red shield from the Supreme RX-78 II. So I did the same thing. I taped off half of it, sprayed some glazer onto my microfiber towel, and then wiped it onto half of the area. Then I took off the masking tape and compared the two sides. Once again, I couldn't really see a difference between the two halves. And at this point, I think it's worth noting that I specifically used masking tape to compare the two differences. And I'll explain why a little later that is very important. But yeah, with the Supreme Shield, it's supposed to be a little glossier. It's supposed to be more vibrant, but it looks pretty much the same. So once again, not impressed with clear plastic. Okay, so the next test we did was an acrylic clear coat. Here I have a painted shield from the high grade wing Gundam. Same thing as the other tests, taped off half of it, wiped the glazer on, took the masking tape off and did a comparison. And to my surprise, it was the same. There's little to no difference in the finish at all. And while I'm not wearing gloves now, it is, and while I'm not wearing gloves now, I was wearing gloves during a majority of the testing process to make sure I wasn't smudging anything with fingerprints. Another surface with no visible difference. And the last surface test we had was a matte clear coat. I tried to choose deeper colors like this dark green from the Master Grade Fenice Redesita. Did the same test, put masking tape on, applied glazer to half of it, took off the masking tape, and compared the results. Well, once again, not really much of a difference. I mean, you can see a little bit of a difference, but even then, I feel like I'm grasping at straws trying to find a difference here. So out of all of the different surfaces I tested on, the one I saw most prominent change in was the vinyl, which is kind of strange considering it's a product for Gumpla. You know, plastic, polystyrene, ABS, not vinyl. <laughs> Now there is one thing that it had really good results on, but it wasn't listed on the list that Gun Primer had. And that one product was this leather wallet. This is just a leather wallet that I keep on the back of my phone. I did the same exact test where I taped off half of it, applied the glazer to one half, took off the masking tape, and compared the results. And it actually looked pretty revitalized. I was surprised. My guess is that because the leather is a more spongy material, it's able to absorb absorb some of the glazer and kind of let it saturate into the leather. But the question is, do you have any leather model kits? Cause I don't. Okay, so maybe it doesn't make your kits look that much better. Why do the kits on Gun Primer's website look so much better? Well, here's the thing. They're using different pictures each time. If you look at the first picture versus the second picture, the very first thing you'll notice is the first picture is very dusty. They said that all of these model kits had been sitting on a shelf for six months and then they applied glazer to it to revive them. I mean, all they really did was brush the dust off. And the second photo does look a little bit richer than the first place, but you can also do that just by editing the image just a little bit. 
So I'm not convinced that this product actually makes your model kit or figures finish look richer. So then what does it offer? It has to have something, right? Another thing that Gum Primer claims the glazer can do is prevent dust from settling. Now, I didn't have enough time to wait six months for dust to get onto these model kits. So what I did was took a little bit of sawdust from my garage. I tried using the most fine particles of it because I figured that would be the closest I could get to actual dust and I sprinkled some of it on. This portion might not be the most scientific because I don't know if sawdust behaves the same way as regular dust, but it is worth noting that the dust did settle and I tried blowing the dust off, hoping that it would just all completely blow off, but some of it did stay and I had to brush it off. So in the dust protection department, I would say probably not. In the end, I'm glad that I did review this product because I really don't think anyone needs to be buying it. Unless you need that absolute two to 3% difference in how your kit looks, then you probably don't need this. In my opinion, you'd be much better off getting one of these dust brushes or even just another makeup brush on Amazon like I did and just dusting your kits off every once in a while. You can also look up some solutions to help prevent dust from settling on your kits depending on where you're storing them. For people that display your kits in a display case, there are ways you can seal up the doors and pretty much any opening in the display case to keep dust from getting in there in the first place. Those are my final thoughts on the Glazer. And if you're from Gum Primer and you're watching this, let me know if I've been applying this wrong because right now I'm not really that thrilled with this product. But I'll link it down below in the description anyways if you want to try it out. But that about wraps it up for the review. If you want to find out more information on the Gum Primer Glazer, just search snake oil on Google. I'd like to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel once again. It helps allow me to buy products like this and review them for you guys. That way you guys can save $36 instead of buying this and being disappointed like I was. And if you're looking for some model kits and don't mind shipping from overseas, go ahead and check the description for links to Hobby Link Japan as well as Studio Gundam Store. Studio Gundam Store is a great great option to shop for kits if you live in East Asia, and Hobby Link Japan is a great place to shop for kits if you live anywhere. Shipping prices are kind of high, but you'll find that with most anything. The good thing about Hobby Link Japan is that the prices are pretty low compared to the United States, so once you factor in the shipping, it almost evens out in the end. But that about wraps it up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. But for now, pick up a kit and start building.